You're watching Beyond Market. Welcome, I'm Esther Awuni. Many thanks for joining us. On the show today, we'll be assessing Nigeria's power sector as investors in the distribution companies say they're willing to sell off their assets to the government. As always, you can join the conversation with the hashtag Beyond Market. You can follow my Twitter handle too, at Esther O. Awuni. Now, some investors in the distribution company of Nigeria's power sector are asking for an urgent meeting with the country's Minister of Power, Works and Housing, Babatuni Fashola, for possible solutions to their challenges. And some discos have indicated their intention to sell off their assets even lower than their actual value. George Tomi, a director at the Eco Electricity Distribution Company, joins me for this discussion. George, thank you so much. It's a pleasure to have you. My pleasure. You know, it's, it's quite interesting how things have turned out and evolved within the past sector, especially along the, va the value chain for the discos, particularly always in the news. Now, we're at a point where some of the investors, I'm not sure if Eco Distribution is one of them, have come to a point where they're willing to throw in the towel and even sell off the assets for even lower value than they got them in the first place. But I'd like us to go right to the beginning, where maybe we, should, we need to take a second look at what could or maybe did go wrong at the beginning that we didn't foresee uh, happening now. What would you say went wrong right from the start? The implementation of the privatization plan. First of all, there were agreements. We have the industry agreements, we have uh, the performance agreements, we have the uh, licenses issued by NEC to these discos, which clearly delineate the functions of all members of the value chain, including the government. Okay. Now, on the, the uh, government side, there were a number of promises. The, performance of the discos were contingent on these ones. You will allow one for cost reflective tariffs, two you will make a provision for subsidy for just two years to cover the issues with the uh, vulnerable uh, consumers. Okay. Then you would make, um, um, you will pay off the MDA debts, those debts are still mounting and counting. Uh, no. So a number of these promises. Now on the side of the distribution companies, you are to reduce um, aggregate technical commercial and collection losses, the ATC and C losses, to each person had a baseline study. And all you are to meter all your customers given a particular, over a particular period of time. And so th th those were, so those, those were all there. But the ability of the discourse to perform was naturally dependent on all these conditions coming into place. First mistake was going, and all this tend to happen nearer elections, going into the elections of 2014. The government, instead of progressively allowing for cost reflective tariffs, did actually lower the tariffs. That was one of the first. So we actually went from a negative position from the start. Did you cry foul then? We did, we did, we did, we did. And then, as if that was not enough, the regulator, uh, NEC, the NEC uh, that was existing at the time, then hit us with the removal of collection losses, the ATC and C, the C and all that, to, to enable us to capture that in as part of our revenue base, which was, in fact, we declared force majeure based on that. Those were paradigm shifts from the original agreement. So it set every one of us back. And we've been crying foul since. And then don't forget, for nearly two years after that board, the, the first board's tenure expired, we didn't have um, neck commissioners. So we're dealing with um, um, officers within the commission who really didn't have the authority, but were mostly in acting capacity. Okay, if I could just so, quickly, sorry, come in here. Mm -hmm. They took out the CM and the collection and then the lower tariffs. Was it possible at that time to say, you know what, we cannot proceed from here on? Yeah. And did you proceed because you thought that along the line, things would get fixed, you get the attention of the minister or get the audience of the minister, yeah, uh, the, any, the regulator, have yeah, a sit down yeah. and, and sort things out? In, in fairness, when um, then this administration came in, um, it's not a, a function of the administration, I take that back. The regulator, okay. we were supposed to be doing tariff reviews. There's the major tariff reviews which takes place once every five years. Okay. And there are the minor reviews, six months. Those are the ones that enable you to adjust your prices for inflation, um, money, foreign, mm -hmm. forex, and of course we know what hit this market, you know, inflation, 
galloped, foreign exchange was a big problem. So many of us who bought assets at the time they were, dollar was 180 to 1, are dealing with a situation at one stage, you remember, it got up to 500. Now we're dealing with 300. That, you can see, is a monumental shift. And that was also, also affected the price of gas. It's not just the disco. Some of these problems are actually coming from the supply side. Okay, so for the effects side, that was just an unfortunate incident that just I happened don't know to about affect... I don't know about unfortunate, it affected everybody. everybody. That's the point I'm making. So you buy a product that's priced in dollars, you have to repay in Naira, you get wiped out. So you need three times, four times more Naira to service the same amount of dollar. That was what instantly hit many of us with the banks. So many of our loans that were performing went into default situation instantly, and they were going to classify them. So from that point on, but what we've seen has been, yes, one bailout after another. But bailouts are temporary measures. If you don't deal with the fundamental issues, and you can still deal with the fundamental issues um, of ensuring that cost-reflective tariff regime comes in. So would that because have been, to what extent would that have been a a turning point or a game changer you for if we did you see, have the, those you, cost reflective You see, perception, perception drives business. Any investor who is coming into any business and you see a business plan that says that upon investing XYZ you make this type of a return and all whatnot, the investments will come in. It does not really matter if initially it drives up the product. Now that's happened with telecoms. But it is the pouring in of investments that stabilizes the market. What we, the biggest challenge we face in power today is that because it is so heavily regulated and it is not reflective of the cost, many investors are holding back. Remember, there is, like I said, the promise. The ultimate thing is for us to get to that point where you have a willing buyer and a willing seller. Even the arrangement that NBET the bulk trader is a temporary arrangement. NBEC is supposed to be out of this picture. We need to get to that point where the discos are buying direct power directly from the Gencos. But because a tariff is essentially political, the government doesn't want to face that problem head on. So they are looking at alternative ways, which is why you are looking at incremental power of grid solutions, ROEA, and so many. If, we, if we're you, going to no, increase tariffs, couldn't there have been also maybe in phases, just gently? Oh no, 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 no. That's why I said, that, That's why I'm saying that it's not just like a jump. That's why I said there are uh, minor reviews, there are major reviews, and you, as long as you, it's a steady plan. You see. Planning is everything in business generally. As long as you know that upon the happening of certain events, this would be the result. And you're making that progression. For example, now two minor reviews that have been approved by NEC have not been implemented. One of the ones that was agreed, they said, no, we must do sculpting. Please freeze tariffs for the R2, one of the classes of consumers, for a period of two years. Don't do that. Recover your costs at the back end. In other words, you get the discos to subsidize consumption until you get to that point. It will never come. No bank is lending discos anymore. I, I'm just amazed at how is, I mean, the, is, component, is the, the tariff part of this conversation, or um, I mean, part of the deal from the start uh, came to what it was, the tariffs not actually being increased. But we'll, we'll get to that point again. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the issue of metering, because I remember sure. at the point the government did make a lot of noise about the fact that the customers were improperly, uh, being properly metered, meters suddenly went out of the market, there was black market sale of meters, the price, and just that back and forth about meters. Tell, let's talk about the, the story around the meters. What went wrong with the metering process? Now, let was me tell you, metering... Weren't, able, weren't we able to get enough meters to all the customers? No, let me, <clears throat> let me start from the beginning with meters. Again, at the point of privatization, every disco was given the number of uh, consumers on their network. Again, I told you, labor didn't allow us to go and verify many of these things. We were supposed to have had a six-month shadow management period that could have given us a clear picture of what was going on. And let me use EcoDisco, for example. We were told that we had about 460,000 consumers thereabout. And a, uh, about only half of that also had been metered. So naturally, a metering plan was to cater for the others. And remember, our expenditure is a heavily regulated business. It is 
is regulated. You cannot just say, oh, I have um, X number of uh, consumers to meter. This is what it's going to cost me. You can't just go and spend it. You need to go back to the regulator. The regulator has to look at your capex. If he does not allow you to take that into your regulated asset base, you make that expenditure, it's almost like blowing money. So even for us, when we looked at our metering plan, it was going to cost us about $250 million to meter everybody in a go disco. But $250 million was the cap on our capex. And what was the reason we, for that? We, why, why is, what was the reason because, for, because for the cap? Because it's a regulated business. Because if I spend it, it must reflect in the tariffs. Because that's the okay. only way I must take it back. But because they want to ensure the tariffs stay, stay so, manageable okay. down, they, they, so they restrict that expenditure. So it's a little bit of uh, chicken and egg to say, go and spend and meter. If I cannot capture that expenditure. I'm just wondering, because so as, as, as a private investor, I mean, that is a huge discomfort. It, that, it, is, that is obviously bad for business. That's why, I, I mean, I'm coming back to that point again. Mm -hmm. Not that you were trying to, that would have amounted to you holding the government or holding the com country to ransom, but mm. I mean, it's, it's a business at the end of the day. You're a private mm. investor. This is the point we're making. It's w a business. What, was it, wouldn't you have said, okay, you know what, well, we, we just can't proceed? Look, you see, what we, we will do is, I mean, you, you just don't bail out. I mean, we, I mean, it's taking so long. No, not bail when, out. Come to the, we, I mean, we, but the dialogue doing, people, no, obviously. No, we, we have been doing that. In fact, that's, um, in fact when, by the time we took over, for example, there had been, if you remember, there was this credited advance payment in mm -hmm. that was in place. It was designed to help ease the problem of metering. But for what I might call inexplicable reasons, that was stopped by the regulator. Now, it put back the burden of metering squarely again on the discos. But recently, they've come out with, with the MISA, meter asset provider regulation. Okay. And they're taking metering away. The discos welcome it. Let me make that very clear. The, the impression given that discos are resisting it is not true. We are happy. But the question we will even ask is, the regulation has been rolled out. It's good to know how many providers have taken advantage of it. Because we are waiting. Let the meter, let somebody else take that heat, the meter heat away from us. And we can then concentrate on improving on other areas of our network. So we're waiting for that so, to happen. But you will still happens, be able to know those who has consumed what and at oh, what cost? Yes, we, will, there, there will be, we need to work out the fine details. But again, this is one of the measures. Whether it's the correct solution, we will look at down the line. Okay. But whatever the case is, all these are because we are finding ways around this hmm. um, 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 uh, tariff issue. Kicking That's why we're doing all that. We're, not, we're not facing the problem head on, but okay. we're looking at ways to get, ways. get around. George, we'll take a later. quick break. We thank you for your time so far. We'll sure. come back to pick up from where we left off. I've been speaking to George, a term director at the Eco Electricity Distribution Company. So we're continuing our focus on Nigeria's power sector. Still with me is George Atomi, director at the Eco Electricity Distribution Company. Thank you so much, George, for your time so far. So we're talking about meters. So that, you said, has been taken off you, and but the modalities of how that will work exactly is still not, still not clear yet. Is that what you're saying? Well, the, 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 the regulations have been rolled out. We are all waiting to see how these things will be done. We're hoping the regulator will call us. We meet with the new meter asset providers. We work out, first of all, the numbers, because many of us have now done new enumeration of our customer bases. And like I said, it's a moving target. No. The, so Okay, so can, can, can we then say that since you started, since investors, including Echo, sure. the Echo Disco, took over the business of yes. providing, being the last mile, providing electricity to sure. Nigerians, sure. has it been a profitable business for you? No, it's not been. It, has it, there it, been at it, any it, point in which you said, okay, we're breaking even, we're no. making profit, it's beginning to look profitable no, the, 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 to the, us? No, the numbers are there. If you look at most of us, our accounts are qualified. And that's because even the issue of, we didn't even inherit closing accounts when we took over. We had to generate new accounts because that was when government was running it. So many, as I told you, there were mismatch between what we found in the RFPs and what we met on ground. Including, so many, I mean, including the, the physical assets. Physical assets, yes. Physical assets, Due yeah. diligence, because we we've talked a lot in the past about yeah, yeah. 
due diligence, yeah. how much due diligence was done. That's what I'm saying. What, what was put on paper to you before you by the government? Was That's it, what I'm how saying. How different was it from when you actually sold the physical assets? When we finally took over the assets, we now did the physical DDs, the due diligence. Mm. And that's when we found a lot of mismatch between what the RFPs contained in the data room, what was in the data room, and what we met on ground. I, so find, that, I, find, that, I find that a little curious, too, because if I, I mean, being an investor, it's a lot of money, and many of the investments are in, uh, in U.S. dollars, and of course, that sure. the devaluation, that, that's you know, the depreciation of the Naira that we saw again. I'm just wondering why there wasn't that push for, look, we need to actually have eyes on these assets, physical assets, so that we are matching what we saw with what's That's on what paper. I know we, we cannot turn back the hands of the clock, no, obviously. Once, you re once we responded, we needed to pay a 30% deposit. Then it was agreed that we would go on ground okay. to go and check. And that's where would have, all these adjustments you're talking about would have been made. Labor, they said no. Government had, remember, government and labor were in, uh, were fighting over severance and all that. In fact, it was the money we paid that was used to pay off labor. So you can see why we couldn't go there, go there before we took over physical control. And after we took it and we started making all of these things, the, the, the regulator agreed with us that we needed to do a rebasing of most of the um, uh, ATC and C loss targets yes. that were given to us because we found out so many things were not there. Most of the assets, they were overstated, the, the functionality, and well, let's, like we said, we've gone past that. But mm -hmm. that is not, doesn't mean there's still a business to run. But if all the other parameters were followed religiously, yeah, it would be a slower climb, but it would be a sure journey. It is the disruptions that, um, that's making the climate uncertain. Okay. Because what you really need, the money, to take us out of the wood in power, generally speaking, it's not in Nigeria. It's going to, it's big money. You, I, I, if you look I mean, at that's, the why we, that's why the government privatized the sector and threw it open to investors. Yeah, yeah, so and why, the whole why, idea why is couldn't we unlock get, more you, you, and get more investment? Yeah, just, just, cre just create an enabling environment. Okay, so for you, regulatory if, if, certainty, if, 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 political certainty, you need to create those. those like I said, we cannot change the laws of economics because this is Nigeria. It works the same everywhere. If there is a perception that investment climate is not friendly, nobody will come, no matter how much they love So, for, as far as you're concerned, in the power sector, the investment climate, the med, uh, interventions or interference mm. by the regulator, the federal government, uh, you think that that played a big no, role? No, what I'm saying is that it's the certainty we need to be working towards. We have, as I've given you what has happened, we have had... Um, a contract that says we'll move towards um, cost reflective tariffs. Now there is clearly no okay, intention to that, do that. that didn't you want to walk okay, around okay, it. Let, let's, That's talk, one. Let's, speak let's, then, speak, let's speak hypothetically. Sorry to butt in. If we did have the cost reflective tariff implemented, perhaps mm -hmm. in phases, but at, according to the agreement, how much difference would things have been? Phenomenal. What would we be now? Phenomenal. We would have been more, maybe halfway. Look, I always liken where we were, like 100 feet deep. You are digging out, you know, you are 50 feet, 80 feet coming out. Because you are still underground, it will look like you're not doing any, any work. But there's a lot of work going on. That would have been a steady progress to come out. Because it will not just be these investors, it will be other investors. Okay, why is there today a rush for some of the new measures that are being implemented? It's because they're being guaranteed cost reflective tariffs. ROEA that's rolling out to markets to. Look at the cost they're offering, 54 naira per kilowatt hour. We are talking about 30. If you give us 54, we will roll out. Eco Disco had completed RFPs for embedded generation for 487 um, um, megawatts. Sitting with the regulator, nothing has been done till today. We recognize that there was always that shortfall and that if people saw steady power, they, they were willing to pay more. We set that proposal in from the first year. Nothing has been done. Then year four or five, we see new players coming in and it's different, similar, and wrestling, similar contracts, yeah, and higher, wrestling, and, re and, wrestling and wrestling our, our, our customers away from us. Give us the same thing. We will, we will produce the power. This is what is 
at the heart of it. Okay, and that's so why the, investors are not happy. There is $72 billion now on the table, for, I mean, dollars from, if I'm correct, from Naira, the, not $72 dollars. billion, uh, Naira, I beg your pardon, from the government. So what, what, what happens from there? I don't know. Is that something look, that... Look, you see, the truth is, I don't know. Many of the... We discuss, we read many of these things the way you people <laughs> read them. Yeah, the consultation level is poor. We need... It's a value chain. You need to take everybody along. We should be having sessions, especially uh, among, amongst the entire value chain. But what we just see are orders here, come here, How, often do, you, how often do you meet with the, either the regulator or the, the minister You of see, power? the minister, we have these monthly briefing sessions with the minister. But I think many of the discos, you, they, they were just more like, we come there we're informed about what's going to happen. I mean, that's, that's a very, very good avenue for you to channel. Yeah, but, uh, and especially it, if, but it's if, monthly if, basis. if your voices count, but if it's a function of a decision that's already been taken somewhere and you have not merely been informed, what's the point? And in any case, this is a privatized environment. We should begin to see the regulator take center stage more and more, pretty much the way NCC works for telecoms, CBN works for the banks. And those are successful privatizations. Remember, with banking sector, we're coming a long way. Same thing with telecoms. Power, there's no rocket science. Just create the enabling environment, investments will come. Okay, so let's come, to, let's come back to, I want, to, I want to come full circle, where we are right now. Sure. Some discos are threatening to sell off the assets. Is Eco Disco one of them? The way many of us feel today, if um, anybody's willing to take us out, if you feel there's loss of confidence, we cannot deliver give us back our money, many of us will take it and Okay, but you will not willingly go to the regulator no, or the government see, and say, you, you know see, what, you, no, you see, for we're us, done. For us, for us, it's a mission. I mean, we're all Nigerians. The government, everybody is depending on Nigerians to make it work. If we talked a bit more often, there wouldn't be this sort of draconian uh, directives that are coming out. What we need to do is talk. These are people who have risked their investments. But and for many of us, the, 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 the risk is real. Wouldn't it's not it, as wouldn't if it's it, a joke. Wouldn't, it, wouldn't things even get even worse for you now? You, you've talked about the fact that there are new players with new contracts, higher with the promise of you know, higher tariffs for them to break even. How does that affect and your, they business, you, your and business And they tell now? you you don't have, even within your license area, you don't have exclusivity. So anybody can just come in, get licensed, and they just, before you know it, the, the, not even to a discussion with you, who has a license, a franchise. We so need, I'm just no, wondering, I'm, I'm trying to think, where, where is this all leading need, to? What, we need support. Okay. We need help. If somebody has power and he wants to sell, let him in the minimum. If you want to sell to a customer in my, okay. in my franchise area, come and talk with me. It's Naira and Kobo. We will see it. We need pressure to be taken off us. But that's not what we're seeing. We're just being told whether or not you like it. This person is coming. Meanwhile, all our data is with them, so they provide to them. They didn't pay for these assets. We paid. Is it fair? Do you think the government is just showing more confidence in these new players? Okay, so how do you well, see this all playing out know. with the new players on, on board? How do you see this all playing out? They're going to just start electricity. What's going to happen? Wars. Are we going to They're see going some discos actually hand over their assets and maybe the new, if they new pay, players? If come. the new players want to take, buy us out. So that's what's going to happen if the new players if want to. They want to. I, don't, I mean, I don't know who these new players are. What I'm just saying is that there is no point coming to cherry pick from my take my good customers, leave me with chaff and everything. If you want to take over the franchise, just give me back my money and let me go. That's the neatest way to do this business. But if you want to come as a support to what is being done, then let us talk. Don't muscle into my territory. Would you territory. be willing to take a loss? Like uh, we had just Disco wanted to take a, is willing to take a loss. I, I, don't, I don't know. But I let each Disco speak for themselves. I mean, when, when it comes to that, it's, you have to make a business judgment. I'm not speaking at this point on behalf of all the Discos. Because every, we, it, I mean, there's a general problem, but it's, it's, the, the level of severity varies from Disco to Disco. And all that. You know, I've so. asked several and energy analysts this, uh, and I'll ask you would you say that the, the power privatization process has failed? I wouldn't say so. I wouldn't say so. Okay. Look, but fundamentally, whether or not we like it in this country, until we move to a point where the commanding heights of the economy leave government and move to the private sector, okay. we've been a quagmire. Right. Judge and that's why I quick, keep going around banking, airlines. Telecoms, they're all out. Power, we should move to the oil industry, PIGB. 
that's when you can have discipline okay. in business affairs. George, thank you, so much. thank you so much for your time today. You're welcome. I've been speaking to George Otome, director of the Eco Electricity Distribution Company.